Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Chris and welcome back to another video. Now, today we're going to be talking about how I saved £30,000 for my house deposit. So for the last year, I've now lived in my own house and I want to share on YouTube what I did to save all that money for a house deposit. Now, I'll be straight up and honest here that saving that money was not easy. Uh, it took time, patience, and a, definitely a lot of sacrifice. But if I am anything to go by, then it is proof that it is still possible to buy a house in the UK in this day and age, becoming increasingly more unrealistic for people wanting to get on the property ladder. And well, that is very true. When you look at the data, it is easy to see that house prices have increased year on year exponentially when you compare that to wages and salary increases, that there is definitely not the same level of growth and increase in wages and salaries compared to house prices, which has meant that when you look at it in terms of average house prices versus salary growth, that it is just incomparable which means that buying a house has become so much harder and so much more unrealistic for most people with that said i do still think it is possible to buy a house it just means a lot of sacrifice a lot of money and a lot of patience and time so in today's video as i said i'm going to talk you through what i did to save for the deposit my situation how long it took and then kind of just some of the I guess top tips or things that I learned along the way that made buying a house and saving for that 30 grand just a little bit easier than potentially if I hadn't have done those things and so first things first I'll set the scene in terms of where I was so I wanted to kind of buy a house for probably the longest time and there is a lot of for and against in terms of buying a house versus renting and there's lots of pros and cons but genuinely buying a house is something that i've always wanted and fortunately my girlfriend has the same thoughts and feelings and genuinely wanted to kind of own our own home so we were both aligned on that in terms of buying a house together and i think that's the first thing that i would just say just genuinely to anyone is make sure that actually buying a house is something that you want to do as i said there is a lot of sacrifice a lot of patience a lot of money that has to be saved in order to buy your own home and buy your own house so make sure it's something you want to do i i just think that a lot of people particularly in the uk there's this idea about owning your own home and it's something that you must do and you have to get on the property ladder you definitely don't you don't have to you know you can rent you can go traveling you can do loads of different things you don't have to buy a house and that's what i would just say in terms of just really think about is buying your own house something that you want to do is it genuinely something that you're really striving towards and you're not just doing it because everyone else is doing it or that's what you think you should be doing so you know once you're clear on that then it becomes a little bit easier to to save for that deposit because i said you know there's a lot of sacrifice that goes into it so you have to make sure that it's a goal that you genuinely are working towards and something that you really genuinely want so just to give you a bit more of an idea of my situation then so as i said i was saving for this deposit with my partner and we were fortunate enough to be living uh, with her family so that meant in terms of kind of our outgoings in terms of rent and accommodation was fairly minimal uh, it meant that we could save a lot more a lot quicker because of that situation uh, and I recognized that I was genuinely very fortunate to be in that situation if I wasn't we weren't able to kind of live with her parents in that situation then we would obviously have had to have rented which would have meant we'd have spent a lot more money each month and had to have saved for much much longer because we couldn't obviously save as much as we were able to so that genuinely is something that i i, I know that i was lucky and fortunate enough to be in that situation and i would say that anyone who is able to live at home i know that everyone isn't able to and everyone else's situation is different 
but always bear that in mind that for those who are able to then make the most of that situation rent is normally one of the biggest expenses that most people will have so in any way that you're able to cut that down um, and that's what we obviously did in our situation when it comes to kind of saving i think it's very obvious um, and everyone kind of defaults to that but you also have to look at what you're spending uh, we were saving for our house during obviously the time in which the the virus was going around uh, so we were spending a lot of time at home uh, which obviously meant that we weren't going out as much we weren't eating out as much we weren't going uh, for drinks or takeaways or you know those kind of things which meant that we were naturally saving more money and when I look back I think the first thing is obviously living at with the parents but the second thing is during that time when things were shut when you couldn't go out we kind of was able to kind of save a lot more than we would have if that wasn't the situation because there's always temptation there's always plans and there was things you're going to do and we just kind of made the most of that situation uh, and it allowed us to save a lot more a lot quicker um, and obviously reach that kind of target so for me that was something that i really kind of focused on uh, saving as much as I could. Um, I think actually, you know, looking back, one of the mistakes I suppose I made was probably saving too much. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, it's very easy to kind of get really focused on what you are trying to work towards in terms of a goal and saving every penny and, you know, not doing anything. Um, and actually, when I think about it, I probably should have focus a little bit less on saving every single penny you know getting a coffee or uh, a takeaway every now and then isn't the end of the world so i'd always say that that try to live your life a little bit particularly now that you know things are quote unquote back to normal you can still go out and go away and see friends etc i think it's still important to do those things just not every day or every week just cut those back uh, and make sure that you realize that if you're wanting to kind of save a substantial amount of money for a house, etc., that you have to sacrifice those things. And sometimes you have to say no to plans. Um, and that means kind of obviously, uh, yeah, cutting back. So I think in our situation, we were fortunate, but genuinely, I think from my experience and what I've learned is that doing those kind of things like seeing friends and going out for drinks every now and then is still okay and you should still do that and definitely don't feel guilty for doing that but knowing that you saved and worked towards your goal of of buying your home as your priority that has to be the kind of the focus when you're working towards this goal so in terms of timelines it took around about two and a half years to kind of save this money um, and this was obviously cutting back on other things I mentioned, really kind of um, making sure to kind of budget. And that's the other thing as well, like visually seeing, I should say, that money each month um, in a spreadsheet or even if just in your bank account is for me something that was kind of a motivator and kept me focused. Seeing that month on month increase as that kind of that money slowly started to kind of increase, that was something that visually helped me realize that yeah there's progress here that we're working towards this goal the track of kind of uh the goal with your partner there is i was very fortunate that we both wanted it in terms of saving towards it but if you get someone who is you know, really keen for it and someone who's kind of wanting to do it then there can potentially be some conflict in terms of how much someone is saving or not saving potentially and so that is always something, you know, a tricky situation that you have to manage. Um, and we definitely had moments, even when we was working towards things that, you know, we probably did disagree on some things like that. So it's always important to keep having conversations, communicating on those things. Um, because as I said, you know, this is a substantial amount of money that you're saving. And so it's only right that you're keeping that communication, making sure that you're aligned on kind of that goal. And that's definitely something that I learned um, that's really, really important. And then the final thing that I did um, away from saving and kind of pulling back was actually looking at how I could increase my income uh, and how I could bring more money in each month. I think there's always a limit to how much you can 
pull back and how much you can save and be frugal. And actually, sometimes it's about kind of how can you bring more money in. So for me, I was kind of focused on getting promoted or finding a new role that was paying more. And I actually found, I ended up doing the latter. I found a role that was paying significantly more uh, and there was more kind of opportunities for me to uh, grow and increase my salary in this new role. And I was able to actually within uh, a year of kind of transitioning from that role, almost double my salary. So that obviously made a massive difference uh, from in terms of monthly income. I mean, I can save a lot more, a lot quicker. So there's definitely real merit in that. Um, there's obviously the added, added benefit of being able to uh, have more in terms of the affordability checks. Uh, obviously in the UK, the affordability checks take into consideration how much you earn and your salary. So in theory, the more you earn in terms of your salary, the more you're able to kind of lend from your bank in terms of your mortgage. I think it's normally about 4.5 slash five um, times your your salary is normally how much a bank um, will lend you in terms of a mortgage so there was the added benefit of the extra money coming in each month that i could save towards the deposit but also the the extra affordability checks in terms of my increase in salary so that was in that kind of two-year period is something i achieved um, and was able to constantly work towards that goal much quicker and some kind of just i guess top tips or actionable things that I think are really important, particularly when you're you're saving for a house or your home. One is uh, Facebook groups uh, or kind of just communities in, in, in general, really. That's something that really helped me. Uh, I joined kind of loads of different Facebook groups around kind of first time buyers um, and really just was in there as kind of a silent person really in the background. I never kind of interacted with people and you definitely can. And in fact, I probably looking back should have. But what I did that for really was to just see proof of concept, to see other people going through that same process of saving or, of, you know, wanting to buy their own home and, you know, asking questions, seeing people who were three or four steps ahead, who had already had an um, offer accepted or something, really understanding like, oh, you know, we're saving for this deposit, but what does those next steps look like when we do finally get to... Um, being able to buy the house in terms of having the deposit so that was really helpful and able to see people when they put up the post about you know getting the keys and that first kind of day or so that was kind of really for me really motivating uh, so yeah genuinely recommend that um, in terms of finding Facebook groups or just communities that really focus on uh, first-time buyers or people kind of saving towards deposits obvious one or maybe not to some but it seemed like an obvious one at the time is make the most of the government schemes. Um, the government do a lot to uh, hinder us in lots of ways, but they do have some fairly good uh, options when it comes to kind of helping you and supporting you in terms of buying your first home. There is obviously the help to buy scheme, uh, which means that you uh, only need to save a 5% deposit and the government would give you a sort of 20% loan towards the rest. Um, towards the purchase of a, a home. A, it has to be a, a brand new home in terms of uh, the houses that you can kind of buy. This is something that wasn't something that me or my girlfriend really considered um, and not something that I suppose in my eyes sort of made sense to us. So we didn't go down that route, but what we did go down that route of is using um, the LISA or you know, the lifetime LISA. Um, and this is essentially an ISA that is kind of focused on one or two things. One around uh, the purchase of your first property, uh, or I think it's in terms of like retirement. And obviously we utilized it for um, buying our first home. So what you're able to do is up to at the time of when we was doing it, um, this is only a couple of years ago, so I'm sure it's fairly similar, but you could um, deposit 4,000 pounds each year, so each financial year, so April to April, you could deposit four grand, and then the government would give a 25% uh, contribution. And obviously an incentive from the government is always nice to have. So just meant that we could save a little bit more, a little bit quicker um, through that kind of incentive. So that's kind of the other thing that we did in terms of understanding what offers or opportunities we had out there in terms of uh, government funding.
And that really was it. Uh, you know, there wasn't any kind of secret formula or a quick fix or magic thing that we did. We really just kind of focused on cutting back, understanding how we could increase our income, understanding what was able to us in terms of the market that could help us save a little bit more, a bit quicker, and really just kind of hunkered down and got on with it. As I said, this is a not an overnight thing this took time this took over two years for us to be able to save this deposit but it meant that we were able to do it much quicker based on kind of obviously our situation and the research and information that we gathered over that period of time and we were able to kind of obviously save our deposit and part of that's kind of 30k that i saved in terms of my contribution to that obviously went towards was the deposit but also things like stamp duty, solicitor fees, uh, mortgage broker fees, uh, surveyor fees, um, searches, etc. All those things that for me, when I was kind of, yes, I'm going to buy a house, I need to save a deposit. All things that I didn't realize I needed to do as part of that process. Um, so I suppose in that, uh, the extra bonus tip, as you were, or the last thought from my side is, really kind of try to understand what is the steps and what is needed in terms of to buy a house from kind of obviously putting in your offer, getting that accepted all the way through to exchange of contracts and getting the keys. There's a kind of a step-by-step -step process that needs to be followed. So genuinely I recommend as part of that sort of when you're saving for the deposit, really take the time to kind of try to understand um, that process and ultimately kind of have a, an idea in terms of the costs associated with that. I think roughly we kind of had earmarked about 5K in total um, out of kind of my portion of my savings that I'd saved in terms of 30K. And my girlfriend, about 5K of that uh, was kind of associated towards things like sound duty, solicitor fees, etc. Um, so yeah, I guess that's kind of like an extra bonus tip. So. Anyway, that's kind of how I saved my £30,000 towards my deposit, towards my first home. Um, and here we are in, in, in my office uh, one year later. So hopefully you did enjoy today's video. And as I said at the beginning, if you could drop a like, I would really, really appreciate it. And if you have stayed this far in the video, then I really do appreciate you. And I'll catch you in the next one.